Oh. Hello YouTube, Central H here, and welcome to the first episode of, I guess, our Let's Build a Fusion Power Plant series. You guys said you wanted to see my continued work on the fusion plant, so <clears throat> I decided to uh, record it. Um, we'll edit these down or speed up parts of them if, uh, as needed. But anyway, in this episode, um, I'm going to be building the uh, four hydrogen preheaters. I don't know if Reika told me that, that he usually used, uh, whether he used four or five uh, hydrogen preheaters, but I figure if I dedicate one heater to each uh, injector, we should have enough plasma. I haven't decided yet whether I want to connect all four together. I probably will. Um, and uh, I don't want to hide things. Like in this facility, I, I don't want to hide uh, any uh, anything because I think it looks really cool, especially these pipes. So um, we'll, we'll come to that in a bit. So anyway, we'll. I've laid out these little um, areas, like these little squares around the uh, hydrogen preheater, you know, caution uh, lines, both to remind me where to put them as well as, uh, I think it looks nice. I really like the factory blocks mod, um, is it, I, I think it's something, uh, or if it's part of an mod, I don't know, but I really like the factory blocks, especially these uh, caution blocks, like they're really nice. So I do remember how to build these, but my memory is not that great. I did actually build it, build it a test one, uh, just to make sure that I remembered exactly how to do it. So yeah, I'm not that amazing. I wish that my mouse wasn't sort of acting up. Like before, my right mouse button for a while, I had I had a trouble where the right mouse button was uh, double right clicking, or it was it was clicking the middle mouse when I right clicked. Uh, now the mouse has a different, equally frustrating problem where it simply doesn't click. Uh, or it, it clicks twice, which made, which, uh, made like aiming in certain uh, games very difficult. Aiming down sights. Because it simply refused to work. Because that the previous problem with my mouse was solved when I updated the firmware, but now I I have to get a new mouse probably. It's like all my stuff is falling apart, and I don't have the money to replace it. Alrighty, and there we go. Preheater number one. Now what I'm thinking of doing, uh, the way to set this up, I did think. Now here's the thing. Because this is above a person, technically means I could stick the heat rays over here and just have flaming death firing above your head, which I might end up doing. Um, but uh, <laughs> if you jumped, you get fried. So we'll, we'll figure that out. I'll just leave that there. We'll figure that out. But I did it this way. Uh, if I wanted to, I could swap it over and do it the other way, um, because we will be going that way, because if we look over here, we have all this space to use, which is going to be great, because we need tons of space, because we need, like, a bunch of everything. Literally, a bunch of everything. Alright, on to preheater number two. So, uh, we'll take some time and explain kind of my thought pro oh, my, my phone's back here. Uh, <laughs> explain the thought process behind the facility and where I want to how I want to lay everything out. So I was kind of as far as the overall design of the building goes, I was very much mimicking the layout of the tokamak itself, like the overall look and shape of it. Um, if you look at the minimap right now, you can kind of see that. We've got that round section in the center, and then we've got a gap, and then we've got that that toroid built around it. And then the um, center sections are kind of like the ejectors. Uh, that was my thought process. Of course, then I just put it on a big base, um, so I'd have a lot of underground space to work with. Um, but it's not actually underground, because when you build this, when you place this thing in the world, it's all above ground. You just can't uh, see all that stuff. You'd be able to hear it though, so you can't get. You won't be able to get close to this facility without hearing it uh, function, which I think is cool. 
So you'll you'll walk up against the you'll walk up to the side of the building and you'll hear the turbines uh, as well as the other stuff. You'll hear it running. You'll hear the, the sounds of operation. I think it's gonna be really nice. Really neat. Get that. Get that back in the hot bar. The actual preheater. Get both lenses in there. That's what I, when I tried building this earlier and I only put one lens in. I'm like, oh, it didn't work. And then I checked the diagram. Oh, you gotta have two lenses, right? I didn't do that now. So you don't build something for a while and you kind of forget how to do it. But I've kind of got them memorized by this point. Close to it, anyway. So I don't want to hide anything because it looks cool. Like, I remember with the with the previous fusion power plant, I, I hid everything. Everything was hidden, uh, except for the like the fuel um, production machinery, which was cool looking. Um, I sort of hid everything else with inside like pipes and things that I had built. Um, mainly because I didn't actually like the look of those components. But I really like the look of the stuff in the rotary craft. Um, so I don't want really to hide it. Ah, come on. I can do that there, it's no problem. I'm going to work back there anyway later. Uh, which is why like pipes and stuff aren't being hidden because they look awesome, especially once plasma is th flowing through them, they're going to look, look really awesome. Plus it lets you see at a glance whether something's working right or not. If there's no plasma in that pipe, you'll be like, oh crap, something's going wrong. <laughs> okay, so... Put that down, like that. Insulation down. So we're gonna get the plasma system sorted, maybe first. I know that these preheaters were first because they're the most obvious thing to build down here. Um, the problem right now is that I'm building this in a in a flat world so that I just have a bunch of room to work. Um, but ultimately, you got to place this in an actual world. I'm hoping that everything pastes properly. I'm gonna test that later. Um, because we're going to have to stick this near a body of, near an ocean uh, if we want to be able to use heavy water extractors to produce um, heavy water for our deuterium and tritium, which I do want to, because uh, needing to make even more reactors and uh, for the purposes of creating heavy water is going to be annoying. Um, and I, I kind of want to use all the, uh, all the, as much of the supply chains as possible. I know you, you can do that, where you don't even need a heavy water extractor, but I kind of want to use them, just so that I have like every component, you know what I'm saying? So that's how we're kind of going to go through that. Now we're going to use Electrocraft to power the facility, because uh, that's the easiest thing to do. And, and then after that, I should know enough about Electrocraft to do a uh, tutorial series. So, again, as soon as this series is over, we'll be able to start electrocrafting. I swear, eventually I'll get through all of this stuff. But, uh, there's a lot. But yeah, electrocraft is definitely the best way to go, um, because then I don't have to worry about maintaining shaft power along long distances. Which isn't a problem, because, I mean, the distances are... Listen, I, I, don't, I don't mean it that way, like, I know that it doesn't... Great, but like, it's easier to route wires than it is to route shafts. That's what I'm saying. It's much easier to divide the power uh, using the electrical system from uh, electric lines. So that's what we're doing. The only mod that this isn't going to use is chromatic craft. So, other than that, we're using like all of Rake's tech mods here, which is. I wonder why that happened. As soon as that formed, like, the lights plugged out for a second. Alright, so if we pull out these pipes, we can get an idea of what we're doing here. Um, the actual deuterium and tritium production for the system is probably going to be back here. I mean, it's definitely going to be back here. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to unify it. And when I say unify, I mean have one massive bank of... Uh, one of reactors and, and, and um, radiation chambers and hydrogen whatevers that few, 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 goodness, 
that feed into all of these or whether behind each one it's going to be its own separate uh, system. So if we were to come back here, now I do want to grant this because we're done building this so we can put that up there, don't need those blocks anymore. And like, because we're going to run the pipes back here, right, through the wall, and then they'll connect to whatever system. So either they'll each connect to their own isolated system, or I'll run the pipes around the, the place. Um, of course, I have to make sure that they connect to the proper ones, because one of these pipes has deuterium in it, and one of these pipes has tritium in it, and I can't let them connect. Now, an interesting thing I could do, if I wanted to have like all the cool stuff in this chamber here, uh, would be to lower one and then raise the other. And this would be a good question for you guys, which one would you rather see? And then if I kept it in this room, although I, I kind of like it in the other room, like in the area it's being produced, so that you can see at a glance whether it's working or not. Um, but if we had it in this room, we would run the pipe back here. Well, we wouldn't do it that way. We would run the pipes along this wall. And you'd have the, um, I forget whether it's deuterium or tritium on this end or whether it even matters. Um, all the way around the room, there'd be a bit of an issue when it got to here. So it, it'll probably be on the outside, on the, in the other rooms, because this whole place is going to be, you know, this is just the center chamber. And then when we go through here, this will be the, um, it'll be divided up, obviously, not just this gigantic empty room. Uh, into other chambers, of course, I hope, I'm not actually 100% whether the, um, whether the, uh, turbines will fit in here. I think they will. I don't think it's that, because we're going to use high pressure. If they won't fit in here, then what I'll need to do is come out here, and then this is what it looks like from the outside. Of the way. I don't know, have you guys ever seen the outside of this thing? I didn't remember. And then make these towers here much uh, bigger, large enough to fit them and then stack them up uh, is one option. Because I don't want anything to be like underground. Like, I want it to be so that you can go to this level, copy it from there and everywhere, and then just shove it on top of whatever land you kind of put it on uh, without having to worry about there being anything underneath the uh, ground layer. And that was the idea there. I want to make it as easy as... You get one of these are cutouts. Um, as easy as possible to paste this into the world. So that's just kind of a little overview of what we're doing. Uh, so we've got the preheaters in. Um, they're hooked up to the um, they're hooked up to the injectors. Uh, of course, now we need to uh, power the um, no nope, space there to power the pipes using Van de Graaff generators. So I'm going to put them right there. I hope that they don't discharge into the uh, injectors, but even if they do, I can just uh, pull this pipe back a bit and have another space there. I hope they don't, though. I hope I can put it there, because uh, that will look the nicest. So we're going to put the Van de Graaffs there. Yeah, I like that. I like putting them in there. And then we'll have to run uh, electric craft wire up. And we're going to have to use a bevel gear. I, I don't think you can uh, orient the um, electric cap motors vertically, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to have a, um, a shaft and a bevel gear there. So I don't actually have to put them right there um, if it turns out, because I could put them like right here, and they discharge horizontally into this pipe. But then I'd have to put more wool around. This wouldn't be a problem because we have a bevel gear right here. Or I could put it back here and it would discharge uh, into the uh, pipe there. But uh, we'll come to that in a bit. Um, because we're already going to be running wire for the heat rays um, over here. So it shouldn't be that difficult to route the wire up to the ceiling and run it across and into the motor for the Van de Graaffs. Because we're also running power into a motor for these Van de Graaffs. I may end up just running wire through these columns, but we'll, come to, we'll figure that out. I'll have to put down, together some test cases. The problem is it's difficult to test this thing 
because the only way to test whether these systems work would be to actually fire one up. <laughs> and then you find out it doesn't work, and then everything explodes. Well, no, it's not gonna explode. And then it breaks, it doesn't work. You have to set up all these uh, various um, uh, supportive structures in order to figure out if it actually works. I mean, I could put reservoirs here uh, to give this the deuterium tritium, but then I still have to wait for it to fire up. Uh, to see whether these explode when the plasma goes in because the vanagraph's not working right. But anyway, um, I don't want to ramble on for too long, but I hope to give you a bit of an idea of where we're going. Let me know in the comments any suggestions that you have for uh, for things that we can do here. Um, I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, if, and if, if anyone contributes uh, designs to the uh, fusion plant, I will, uh, of course, uh, credit you in the video. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, stay tuned for future episodes. I'm going to try and put these out as well on Tuesday, or I may end up filming them on Tuesday and then uploading them on Thursday. We'll figure it out. Um, once this place is fully built, uh, of course, we're going to fire it up. So uh, it's getting closer. We're, we're sort of counting down to uh, to when the place goes live. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Stay tuned for future episodes. Well, that was an ominous noise. Anyway, I've said the late shit. I'm signing out.